Today is the mid-January garden tour and you're going to get an added surprise later on in this video that was unexpected even by me. What a glorious beautiful day in winter at about 65 degrees. I cannot complain but I am here in Southern California and we're going to do a garden tour. This is Robbie and we're going to walk around a little differently this time because I'm going to talk more of what's coming and what's already here because well at night we're in the 40s we get down into the 30s and it's just simply too cold for so many plants so i'm starting some stuff inside but i'm going to really get busy within the next month or so so let's take a trip around the different gardens i'll tell you what's coming and what is already here that i don't have to do anything except reap the benefits of eating each night still from my garden so this is the famous chair garden. It's been up for quite a few years now. I've got the whole video on how I did this with free chairs that I got. I painted them. And you know what? All these colors you see here, they were painted years ago and it's still holding the color. Now what's going on here is the totes are doing pretty good. There's one that's going to have to be replaced. I think I'm going to replace it because the wind the cold wind comes up the canyon and beats on it. So it kind of got a toll from the weather. It all goes back to climate on that. The rest of them are doing really well. You can see how nice they're doing. And I would say they have another year, two, three, who knows, maybe four years as long as they're not pulled or bumped. Because a couple of them, even the one I think that's broke from the weather, may not be the weather because there's times I'm shoveling in there and I pull real hard. So I'm trying not to do that. And I went right through it once. And that was my fault. But I still have greens growing. The tomatoes, I'm not sure we'll see in the spring because we're only a third into winter. So we have two more months of winter. But beautiful tomatoes I've got. And I've got an eggplant growing. So when spring comes, I will step in here and look around and I'll decide what's going to stay and what's not going to stay. And I have a wheelbarrow. I will come in here, pull it out, put all the leaf matter that goes back from the plant into the tote. And then I will top it with the soil that came out of here. So it's a constant feeding the tote, the soil with nature's own leaves. Like this one's got powdery mildew just because our mornings are too wet and damp. Stuff like this goes right back and it feeds my garden, just like nature does. I don't do anything to all these plants and trees up there. They're all being taken care of by nature. So we'll kind of go through here. We'll decide on what tomatoes look good. I have red vein sorrel still growing. I have got a zucchini plant that's trying desperately to grow. You know, I'll tell you something. You know how they can go into their second year. If this plant doesn't die from frost and we don't get it below 30 it could end up making a big comeback and being my first squash plant to have fruit because I'm not pulling it out there's no reason to pull it out right now I can compost it later so this is the chair garden I'm very excited with it I will redo some of the irrigation tubing to be more for what I want to grow in there at the time I've got walking onions garlic chives still a lot of stuff my turmeric is pretty much done and I think this year my plans are to get more turmeric here because nothing eats it. I don't have to worry about the squirrels or anything eating it. I don't have to tool it. So I'm going to plant turmeric in buckets. The water that comes out of these totes, I only have it draining from the front. So I know where the water is going. It's going to go into wherever everything is growing. That's why I've got so many things I've propagated. Look at all the beautiful geraniums. They're all being fed by the totes. I just water the totes. I haven't watered in about three weeks because it's been so damp. So everything is being taken care of by nature. But when I do water, it waters all these containers on the bottom. So it's kind of a double duty. It works perfect. Let's go, let's go look at the turmeric for a minute. As you can see, the cold is taking over and it is dying back. It's not getting any new growth. It is done. So what I really need to do, I have so much to do, is I need to get in here and get all the turmeric out. There's going to be a ton of turmeric to come out. Get everything ready so come spring, when the weather starts to get a little warmer, 
I would say when we hit about 50 degrees at night is when I'll start putting all this back out. I'm going to harvest it all. I've been harvesting as I need right now. Kind of a lazy way of doing it because if it gets too wet and damp, I could lose it. Now, being that this is still holding on, that means the turmeric inside is still good. And so I don't have to worry about it rotting yet, but I will want to get it out because it's a tropical plant and it will go deep down inside the pot. Remember, turmeric and ginger grow completely different. A lot of people don't talk about that. So you have to know when you're planting them, which way you're going to plant them to get, well, to get the most out of them and to keep the plants healthy and going really good. So I'm really excited about this because the first year I strictly used the tree leaves. I went to the bottom, dug them up, and just filled it up with leaf matter from this pepper tree. It's a California pepper tree. And then I grew a lot of turmeric. But then last year, I used already the soil that was created in here by the leaf matter. And I kind of freshened it up, put it all back, and I think it's done fabulous. I'm a little amazed at this because this turmeric has gotten really no sun. It's under this pepper tree that maybe gets filtered light, but really doesn't get much light and it's done really good where ginger i think ginger needs a little bit more sunlight and i don't think ginger would survive here i can't complain on this am i going to move the table out a little bit to give it more sun i don't know watch and see later what i decide to do because i really don't know let's go over to the truck bed so i told you two weeks ago what i was going to do with the truck bed i haven't changed my mind I'm going to leave the shark fin melon plant that's already growing in there because shark fin melon, it's a type of squash. It creates a root system that doesn't die. So when you get 30 degrees, the plant on the top dies, the roots wait, and then as soon as the weather is good, it comes right back. So I'm, instead of digging it out, there's no reason to dig it out. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to let that do its thing, but I'm not going to plant in here. I'm going to get the buckets that I've got in here. Like I've got this purple one. I'm going to leave a few buckets in the front. Maybe I'll put something in there unique. I'm not sure. And then I'm going to get the buckets out from the back because I'm also going to get potatoes growing around here. Potatoes have been doing fantastic and I'm growing more and more potatoes since I've started gardening and I really enjoy it because you don't have to peel them. Even if they're really tiny, when you pick them, it is so soft and so good when you cook it, you definitely don't peel them. You just boil it the way it is, roast them, whatever you want, and they grow so easy. And if you have enough buckets, you can be harvesting potatoes every week because it takes about three months and then it, you just have all the potatoes you want. So I'm going to use those buckets for that. And then I'll keep a few buckets, maybe. That I'm still not sure. I could end up pulling all the buckets out. And I see the shark fin melon looks like it's trying to grow again. Like it's still winter and it's already growing because we've been kind of... Well, we're cold at night and we're starting to get a little warm during the day. So whatever it does, it does. And then I'm gonna get this top dressed with leaves and matter and maybe the stuff that Gary collected, the weeds, and get that in there and then throw flower seeds in there and let the flowers grow. The grasses at that point, I'll pull them out. Uh, these grass heads don't seem to be a bird's favorite. They seem to ignore this, and this is more of a weed. It's not really the dangerous one that we've got here. It's another one, but I'll just chop that out and drop it and then let it do its thing. I've got an avocado tree in there, but I don't want to keep it. I have one that I'm going to keep, and that's it. So that's what's going on with the truck bed. I'm probably going to hit it with a little, well, white spray paint because we found it in the garage and it's really old. So I might just, whatever I've got left, hit it with that. I'm going to paint the barbecue that Gary designed for me and did. He did a whole video on this. I want to paint the front and make that look pretty. But this year, because I have so many other projects going on, I know a lot of you said, paint it up psychedelically, paint things all over it. I think this year I'll leave it white, get the flowers going. I've got geraniums that are growing all over here for free and I've got trailing ones and I think it'd be really cool to let the geraniums trail down and that have flowers drizzling down on the front so I'm going to try that and then maybe next year I'll paint it up we'll see but I probably will get the barbecue painted let's walk over to the driveway the long driveway here and you'll see of the wall I should say what's going on there oh I was going to tell you I picked the last of my cucumbers, but I actually see two more cucumbers on here. 
The last two, one was bitter, one was okay because we've left them too long. It's the wrong season. The totes, I have different plants. You will see this spring. I am not going to do it the way I did it because this is valuable hot weather plants can grow here. With this wall in the summer, it stays warm. So I have to be mindful if I want to grow a lot. If I want to just grow, then I just go through and throw my zucchini and go on my way like I did. But stepping back this winter and thinking about it, there's a lot I can do on this wall all the way down. We've got the ponds down there. I'm gonna leave that the way it is because we've got a raccoon issue. Let the raccoon do its thing. It comes in at night and knocks everything around, but it's not bothering none of my totes. So it hasn't found anything it wants to eat. Probably coming in for water and maybe even snails because they're really big on eating snails. Now, behind me, I think I'm gonna get more totes back here. That is kind of iffy. I might go with buckets since I'm pulling the buckets out of the truck bed and I might line this with potatoes because nothing bothers potatoes. So that works out really good. So we'll see how that goes. And then that way, the same thing. I haven't done anything right now, but let me tell you something. We're foraging constantly out of all this. I mean, not only do I have cucumbers in here, I have Malabar spinach still growing. I've got walking onions all through here. I've got Swiss chard red and green growing. I've even got a pepper plant that I had in my chair garden that looked like it died. It was just a stick. So I brought it over and I put it in a tote and I wrapped it with old tool. That's why I said, don't throw your old tool away. Even if you look at it and think, eh, it's so cheap. I'm gonna put new out next spring. Don't throw it away because it acts like a blanket. So I wrapped my pepper plant and not only did it spring back to life, it's already growing flowers and has a pepper on it. And that's what I was saying, this is warm. The pepper may not like a lot of sun in the summer, but right now it's getting the warmth from the wall, the warmth from the sun, because this is just so sunny all day. And so the pepper bursted back into life. And then I've got tomatoes going, growing on the ground. I didn't put it there. Tomato fell and it just grew and geraniums growing. So this whole wall on both sides, we'll see what happens as I come back in the spring. You know that I moved some of the totes because Gary got the wood chips delivered. I asked him if he plans on getting any more. He told me no. If he really is serious, I could do it two ways, you know, as I'm talking to you. And this is why I love talking out loud because it makes me think. I could put totes back that are kind of sprawled around that need to be put back because the truck had to come through and we had to move the totes. But what I could do is not put totes back, but put five gallon buckets. Like I've got three five gallon buckets here. This one grew, well, it's still growing a squash. And then it grew walking onions. That one was growing cucumbers. That one is growing, well, south thistle right now for the birds. And I leave all this because this is bird food for the winter. And then come spring, which is really, seems to be coming quick around here because I've noticed a lot of birds courting and stuff. They use this for nesting material, especially the hummingbirds. So as I was saying, I kind of digress. I could put buckets there, five gallon buckets, because that's an easy thing to pick up and move if he does decide to get wood chips. I haven't used any yet, but he's real big on putting it all over the ground because we're so muddy here and it's clay. And when we get rain, you really, it sticks to your shoes and everything. So if I line the area where we had to move the totes, I can put buckets. And if he does decide, they call and say, hey, we got a load. I can just grab them or he can just grab them, move them to the side. The truck can come in and then the buckets go back. And that's actually a really good idea. On top of that, peppers do really good in buckets. So now I'm talking to you out loud. See, I haven't even thought about that. Oh my, I can put peppers all along the wall down here. So at any given time, they're getting wood chips and he wants to spread it around the yard. Go for it because all he has to do is move a dozen or two buckets, which are easier than totes, because totes you have to empty. That's 18 gallons, usually the smallest tote we grow in. There's a few smaller ones, but mainly I get the 18 gallon ones that you get them at Walmart and Target for like $7. But the buckets, I never fill them to the top anyways, that's five gallons. So you figure there's four gallons of soil in there and it's easy to pick up. I move them all the time. So if I line this with buckets, he can easily get that moved and then he can bring in anything he wants. And it would be a win-win for me because it's gonna give me more of what I wanna grow, which are peppers. I'm trying some new ones soon. 
that are not too hot but have great flavor and then potatoes because once you start potatoes you're going to have potatoes forever because you take some to eat and you throw some of them back some people take the biggest potato and put it back I a lot of times take the ones I can barely see and put them back and then I end up with a great harvest three months later. So you do it the way you want and I think that's what I'm going to do. Thanks for making me think and decide maybe buckets are the way to go on that side of the wall. Let's go to my new garden I'm going to set up because I'm excited about that. Now this I'm really excited with. You saw this, I already did the video on it and the reason I haven't done any updates, well, it's still too early to do an update because it's for, oops, I opened the door the wrong way. Hold on, because I can open in or out. I have so many thoughts on this and I want to set it up in different ways. So I've already ordered something because I'm going to do it two different ways. I'm going to do this on the free side. You can't see me because I can stand. So I'm going to use food containers. We'll see how I set this up or things that you can get from stores really, really cheap. I went ahead and I left this tote in here right now because I'm thinking of setting up a tote. I want to compost in here. If I compost in here, I will have a constant source of plant food for my plants, which is something we all should do, especially if we set up something like this or even a small garden. So here's what I'm going to do. I ordered something that was so cheap I couldn't believe it and it will last forever. Again, remember, this will last you forever if you've set something like this up and you need to protect your plants from kids, dogs, cats. A lot of you have wild cats and you know what cats love to do in nice, beautiful soil? Yeah, they dig in there and then they leave you a little gift and you don't want to eat that, okay? This will keep cats out. Will it keep, as it stands, rodents out? No. But I'm going to try covering this with tool. Now, if you want to use tool, because of course, if something was desperate, who knows what they're gonna do. This is out in the open. So when they come here, they're gonna look at this and they're gonna try to get in. And I have a method, I think, with the tool, what might work. So I'm gonna use tool first because it, I could cover this whole thing for less than $10. The other way is we could put wire, but I wanna talk about that when we get to it. Why I'm not using wire yet, even though Gary told me he's got scrap wire, I wanna try different things first. So I'm really excited on what I'm gonna grow in here because I think there's so much potential with this because we, you know how I grow in dish pans. This is gonna be a fabulous mini kitchen garden. I mean, it's gonna be epic. It's just so fantastic. And so I'm gonna set this up really in a way that I think You'd be able to watch and they say, oh, I don't like that. Or, oh, wait, she's doing this also? I can use this. And that's what I love doing. You're not going to get a bunch of nonsense from me. I'm not trying to sell you anything. So many other channels out there, I, I've got to be careful how I word this, are doing one thing. They show you something and they want you to buy a certain product. Okay, this is what they want. I'm not doing that. I will put products out there. In fact, I got products being attached to me only because they know I use them. Some of them I didn't put there. Some of them I did put there because I trust the company. I've had a few of you come in and say, oh, buy from this company. You could get tool cheaper. And I couldn't get a response from the company. I couldn't contact them. I didn't know what country they were in or where they were coming from and where my information was gonna go to. And on top of that, the price wasn't even good. So. I usually only put something that I've bought from or somebody I have communicated with. I'm not asking you to buy anything. I love you all whether you buy something or nothing. It doesn't matter. I bought this. I paid full price. I got no discount or anything because it's something I think some of you who have had issues gardening, this could be the answer. And I was so excited I wanted to buy two and I backed off and thought, let's start with one and maybe I'll put a second one on the other side. So products to me are something that some of us frankly have to do. Not all of us are pickers. Gary goes driving around and he'll jump out of the truck and pick up trash on the side of the street, come home and build something. But realistically, there's a lot of us that can't do that. And that's why I'm doing this two ways. One on a purchase I did that I think will last forever, but I still have to set it up with you and look at it. And then the other way is to do it on the free side or super cheap. 
So you'll see as this goes, frankly, it's too cold for me to even think about it, but I'm getting close because I think I'm about ready to set up my new little thing I got for this. And I think it's gonna work fabulous. So you'll see as we go, but please understand, I'm not trying to sell you anything. You wanna buy something, of course. I bought myself, I designed some t-shirts. I'm not even wearing it now, it's too cold. I didn't order a sweatshirt. I design stuff if you want it, you know, and I bought some of the t-shirts for myself and I'll be wearing it. But that doesn't mean I expect anything. I'm not going to ask you to buy my merchandise or anything. You do what you want because all of us have different financial, you know, situations. And I understand that. That's why my goal in my life with things I've done my whole life, not just gardening, was to help out to get people to go in the right direction and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. It can cost either nothing or next to nothing. So that's my goal. So you'll see all the different things that we do in our garden and really most of it is on the free, really, or so incredibly cheap. So let's go to the front yard and see what's going on. I got a pile of wood chips there. Why? Because we got a plumbing issue which got patched and is doing fantastic. So we're gonna wait on that. And later on, we'll do better with our plumbing, but it's, it's working. The front yard is doing great. I haven't done a thing. I barely did anything last year and it's still going good. I've got geraniums, I've got my finger lime, and then I've got back here all kinds of brassicas that I'm harvesting all the time. See, we have plenty of food all over here because I thought about what we want to grow. And what we want to grow is greens that will survive the winter. A lot of you that are in snowy areas, keep in mind your tree collards, especially the green one, they will do really good even in the snow, in the cold, cold weather. So that might be something you would want to kind of get into or collard certain plants that like the cold weather. And that doesn't mean growing it in the winter. That means growing it as fall comes in and it starts to cool. You want to get that in the ground before it's too cold because plants are going to grow really, really good when it's ice cold outside, but they will grow good when it's cool and then they will continue to flourish in the cold weather. That's the cold weather plants. And also keep in mind, I've heard a few of you didn't understand, there's summer squash and winter squash. Winter squash does not mean you plant it in the fall and grow it in the winter. All your squash grow at the same time. As long as we remember that, we'll be okay. The difference is summer squash cannot be stored unless you freeze it. Winter squash gets the tough skin, which is like pumpkin, spaghetti squash, delicatas. They get a tougher skin and they store. So winter squash stores, summer squash you eat fresh. That's all you have to remember. So I am really pleased with all this. I've got a whole dish pan growing here with all my baby celery. I have baby celery everywhere. Then here I'm gonna redo this. I did a tomato project last year and I'm not gonna do that again. I was really happy with this irrigation tubing. I'm leaving it. I took the tool down. I'm using it somewhere else to protect the plant. And now I'm gonna decide what I wanna put in here. The tomato project I put in here was growing these little tiny tomato plants that grew a lot of tomatoes. I wasn't crazy about the taste. They were very, not a lot of flavor, kind of water-like inside. It, it was juicy, but not a, just no flavor. And I can do much better here in my climate, my area, growing cherry tomatoes, any type of cherry tomatoes. They just grow really big. You don't want them real big. Cut to trim them down. They'll keep growing. They send side shoots out. This was a lot of work to kind of keep them intact. Oh gosh, they're coming up. All the seeds that I, the plants I didn't pick. Maybe the hybrids will do better than the original because hopefully they'll hybridize with other tomatoes around here. I don't know. But it wasn't something that I would do again. Personally, I know a lot of people love it. That's what they want and that's great. But for me, I want to get something else in here. If I was planning for the winter, I would plant a lot of brassicas in here during the summer, keep it as shaded. This hole is beautiful. You can put flags on here or material or fabric or anything. You can clip it on and shade the plants. And then come fall, you'll have a winter harvest all year, or I should say all winter, of your brassica plants, like tree collards or regular colored. But I'm not sure yet. I might go ahead and plant zucchini in here. It depends on the sun. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on the sun because of the pine trees. I've got the pine trees here that are getting bigger and I love them. I know that 
years ago we took one out well, it wasn't our choice the electric company came and said the power lines are going to go if your tree goes so they took that one out they did offer to take more i love them it brings in so much nature and there's it's so full of hummingbirds and all kinds of birds all year so i figured no and they're happy. I, they actually come out, the electric company, and they inspect them. I love that. They just came a while ago and they inspected them and they said they're healthy. They have no diseases because the moment they see something, they're going to take them out. So that's a good thing, actually, because they're honest and they have been checking them. So I'm thinking about how I'm going to do this garden and we'll do that in the spring as planting season comes. I do have another garden I'm setting up over there. That's going to be, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it. Maybe you can help me call it something so when I refer to it, you'll know. I was thinking the epic kitchen garden or the epic mini garden or I'm not sure, but it's going to be a mini garden that anybody can grow because you're only using a small footprint, literally like four by eight. That's all you need and you can grow a ton of stuff up you can protect it from all kinds of critters. Nothing's going to get in it. No cats, no dogs, no nothing. And so I'm just not sure what to call it. But it's been doing great right now. I'm growing right now lettuce in there. I've got brassicas. I've got bok choy in there, purple. I've got purslane growing in there, celery, garlic, garlic chives. So I've got everything growing in there. But I want to be a little bit more mindful of what I set in there comes spring because I want it to be more of a go-to garden that it almost has everything you need for everyday dinner or an everyday meal. So think of a name. What should I call it? I don't know. I think the epic mini kitchen garden would be great. Okay, let's go take a look at the ginger and the turmeric. Now this has been exciting for me. I've got a lot of thoughts on this. I've got a lot of turmeric that's left, but the turmeric, as you can see, the plant is done and the leaves are all brown and yellow. So I've been harvesting as I need. I made a bunch of ginger cookies the other day. They were fabulous. I still have my stevia back there. It looks sad. I either may do cuttings from it or just get a new stevia. I've had it for years. So I'm not sure if the plant will come back or not. But I have noticed that the ginger grew better over there and not as good here. There were only two ginger pots here. The turmeric did fantastic. I'm starting to think it may not be the wall, though it may be the lack of light, not just because of the pine trees I was telling you about, but turmeric gets massive. I mean, it just fills this area with these great big leaves, and ginger grows kind of like a palm frond. It's just so fine, the leaves. And it may have, see how you can shade? It may have gotten too much shade from the turmeric, because this was all turmeric, and the ginger needed the light that it was losing from the trees, and it was also losing from the turmeric. So it lost that bit of light. Turmeric, though, will each get taller than the other, and they're going to try to grow, and they grow, like I said, different. So you have to treat turmeric completely different than ginger when you're planting it if you want a really good crop. Now, we'll talk about that again more as we get into planting it. I've got tons of videos on growing and planting turmeric and ginger. You should check that out because turmeric needs a deeper pot because it grows down. Everything you are growing on the top continues to go down. Ginger does not, and that's why we want to know the difference on that. So I've been really pleased. I, I have been harvesting so much that I still have a bunch in the house, and as soon as I get through that, I've been using it in stir fries. You can grate it up, make a tea out of it, ginger. Uh, same thing with turmeric. I haven't made a tea out of it, but I've been eating it raw. I just make sure that I get something like butter or oil with black pepper because you'll absorb the turmeric, the great properties in it. And if you have any inflammation, it is fantastic for that. So I've been eating it. Now, I don't eat a lot. You don't want to eat a lot, but I eat a piece about that big, like you're eating a small carrot or half of a carrot. It seems to work. And I'm going to get more of this out. I have to get it out, though this gets good sun, as you can see right now. So I haven't had any rotting issues, but still, I could. So I do want to harvest all of this as time goes on. But I'm doing it now one at a time. And being that I grow them, in the, like this is a two gallon bucket, and these are like one or two gallon flower pots, all I have to do, it's the easiest thing, is put my gloves on, 
tip one of them in there, harvest the whole thing, take out what I want, and put everything back and be ready for spring. And this is the dish pans I use that I love. I, I can't believe how much you can grow on this. And I've got videos on that too. But this, you don't need a wheelbarrow. You just tip it. I've done potatoes this way. You can do the same thing if you want to grow a whole bunch of little pots with potatoes. You may end up with small potatoes, but you know how much small potatoes cost? They cost more than the big potatoes. So there's a lot of ways that we can garden on the small side just to get some good food in us. And let me tell you something. I don't want to really get too much in the food, but we do need to get something that we grew or really good fresh food in us because so much of our food is really processed now. I'm not telling you not to eat it. I will never tell you what not to eat. But what I will say is try to add something, even if it's herbs, into your food to get the enzymes and the properties you need for your food to digest everything correctly, to keep your system going like nature and God intended. Okay, let's go now into the bird garden. So now we're in the bird garden. And though the bird garden grows, Tons of different things, all kinds of brassicas, dinosaur kale, I've got lemon verbena, I've got dragon fruit, tomatoes, mushroom plant, mint, flowers, everything. I am catering to the birds in here and they get the best food. I will tell you, they don't get just the 25 pound bags, you wild bird mix that you find. I buy spray millet, don't need to, but I like buying spray millet. I get a good quality parakeet mix that you would buy for your pet bird. Then we get sunflower and we also get finch mix. And this brings in the spice finches, the pintail whitas, all the different birds you see. And it's, you know what, it's a, let's call it a labor of love. I absolutely enjoy it. This is my tranquil place to come and have coffee in the morning. I have two electric fountains in here. The rest are all solar. I, I can't even say anything bad about it. I, it's just someplace I love to hang out. It's just peaceful, stress relieving, just a lot of fun. I do still plan on growing a lot of food in here. And come this spring, I wanna get more flowers, though we have a lot of flowers. You, as you can see here, we have different types of what they call emu bush. And some grow tall, some grow short and stocky. This one is a yellow flower. I just did a video on propagating this. These are expensive. They're like $20 when you buy it in a, I think it's a five gallon pot. And now that I know you can propagate it really easy and the little tricks to do it, I'm gonna be propagating a lot of that. Then I've got the hummingbird's lunch. I've got some behind you that I propagated by a branch breaking off and now it's growing tons of flowers. All kinds of stuff in here. Geraniums, though, geraniums aren't really big with nectar. They're good for them to hide in, to perch in, and to collect a little bit of pollen and insects that hang around in there. And I've got my roses and all different types of plants. But I am growing food in here. We still grow garlic chives and walking onions and, like I said, tomatoes and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to grow more dragon fruit in here. So there is a lot of different stuff that I grow in here. And so it it's a combination of for the birds and for us. The birds that come in that I'm feeding the C2 also invite in and bring in the insect eaters because they see them eating and they know it's safe. And then they come in and they go along, especially my vegetable plants, and they pick off all those little nasty bugs that we don't want. That works out fantastic. So it's a win-win. Now I am setting up new totes. You've seen it. I did the video on that and I'm going crazy with that because I've got one on the deck I haven't gotten a clip yet from my camera because I noticed it this morning that I've got fly catchers coming in now. Not just the warblers that have been hanging around eating all the little insects out of my composting tote. So I'm composting, creating plant food, creating new compost, and now feeding wildlife. Wait till they go to nest this spring. Maybe that's why a lot of them are starting to act like they're going to go to nest because there's an abundance of food. Because food is the reason that, that they go to nest early. If they've got the food, they can deal with the weather, but if they, like I said, if they've got the food, they will go to nest. We've actually seen flycatchers in the past abandon their nest because they couldn't find enough food, we believe. So that can happen, but I'm going to be giving them a lot of food in all different directions. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But this will be cleaned up as winter 
goes out and spring comes in and it's just been fun. You saw that Gary got this gazebo in the trash and the zigzag all through here is to prevent hawks from coming in. You can't stop the hawks. I mean, after all, I'm feeding seed eaters that come in and eat the seed. I'm feeding insect eaters that come in and eat little small insects. I don't want to feed the meat eating birds, but they are around. It's part of life. I do the best I can to keep them out of here. I can't control nature because otherwise we wouldn't have them either. I just hope that they get other rodents like rats and not birds. But the zigzag wood around here that I put up does keep them out. And I'm going to do a lot more with the irrigation tubing I started using. Nobody was using it for growing. And I've been growing now for years with it. And I've been showing you guys, you'll see that in the spring. I'm going to zigzag this through here. I experimented further down to see how it would work and it's working fantastic. So we're gonna bring that through here. I can hang things on it and grow things on it and it will protect the birds. So that's what's going on in the bird garden, getting a lot of flowers growing, zinnias, and I hope to do a whole lot more. And I think it's a lot of fun. And I'll show you the papayas as well because now they're throwing papayas. I'm just hoping we don't get too, too cold. Otherwise we'll lose them, but they made it through last winter. Remember I lost the big ones that were outside by the rainbow garden. They couldn't take the cold. Our, Weather for the past couple years, the past couple winters, was so cold. We even got snow last year. That really wiped out the last of the papayas. But my strawberry papayas that are growing in 18-gallon tote, mind you, they survived. And then I've got one papaya behind me who was looking sad. So that's where I took the old tool that was from the front garden, the front of the house, and I wrapped the trunk and it's making a beautiful growth and comeback, and it doesn't look like it's struggling at all anymore. And that's why I said, don't throw away your old tool. You can wrap that around the base of the plant. So when the wind comes and the wind chill factor is really low, it will hit the tool and then it will warm it just slightly because it won't get that cold blast of air and it works fantastic. You know what? I think we've seen enough in here. Let's go look at the rainbow garden. Let's take one quick peek into Gary's room here. This is a special room. I don't blame him. You know why? When it's freezing outside, it's beautiful and warm in here. Look at all those plants. The, look at my plants. Can you see this? If you go back and look at the video, I really got to make an update. You saw me make these fancy stands. Oh, no, you didn't. I didn't do the video on that, but I was making them in the video. These stands have worked fantastic and they're holding up the plant. These are dragon fruit seedlings. Look how big they got. Planted those last year and the only reason they didn't grow really good is because I grew them in here and I didn't take them out. I didn't take them out. Is that funny? And I left them and then I thought, okay, a few months ago I said I better get them planted. And look, he's been trying to transplant some of them. They've gotten so big. And this, I did a video when I went to Home Depot and I got some free, well not free plants, I got the leaves that were on the ground. Look at this, two plants grew. So I'm going to have to get that out later on. They grew from the little pieces I found. But that's what's going on here. I just thought it'd be fun to take a peek. These are all his dragon fruit. We went to that dragon fruit show. And he bought it from one man. And they were just fantastic. And then the other one he bought from the one that sponsored the show is just not growing. It's, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I shouldn't have bought it. I should have told him not to. It's so sunburned. It won't set root. It's slowly drying up and just dying away. And it was, that's basically what it looked like when we got it. So am I pleased? No, I personally would never sell something like that. But what are you gonna do? So anyways, he's trying everything to save it. And I worry sometimes that even if he saved it, would it really grow as good as something that just wants to grow? I don't know, but you know, it's worth trying. And of course, and he's gonna see if he can save it at all. It just won't set root. And I think the main reason is because it was a dried out piece. It had gotten badly sunburned. It had already a lot of damage. You don't know when it, the cutting was taken, how long it sat. It was, it was very dry. And so that's the one piece he got from the one that did the show. But the other one that was there, there I can't think of his name offhand. He's got a big farm up a little further up north, not up north, but north of Los Angeles, further up there. He, he just did 
he had beautiful cuttings when we got up there and looked and they just look at them look at they're vigorously growing they're just all taking off so gary got a bunch from him and they were really good priced and immediately when he set them in the soil the way he's supposed to you'll have to ask him how he did it they just took off like mad but we'll see what happens i'll let you know if that one ever makes it and i think the name is amazona and we'll see if anything comes about that. But that's what's going on in here. He's got his own little room with his own little mirrors. <laughs> and it's really set up really good. And well, you can't complain about this. This is a good place for me to set some seedlings up because we use both shoe boxes and pencil boxes. Oh, and here is the culantro I planted last year. And we're bringing it in because it doesn't like the cold and it sets seed. And I haven't even collected any seed. That's not, that's culantro, not cilantro. And that's from Puerto Rico and it's doing really good. And that's my original mushroom plant. It died back because I left it in the sun. But it's coming back and that's okay. I have a window full. I keep doing cuttings on the one I brought in and it keeps growing. And so we eat the leaves. I put the stems in there the way I do it. And then they just keep growing. So now, now we'll go into the rainbow garden. Strawberries. I don't think I'll regrow those. Keep in mind, if people tell you start collecting all the strawberry plants that are from your strawberries, make sure you know what they're doing or what the strawberries are doing because sometimes you can end up growing strawberries you don't want. Let me get this set up and I will tell you what's going on here. There's my dog run back there, the dog kennel. Oh, the potato mint is still here. It didn't die back yet really needs to be harvested and that's malabar spinach i've got some geraniums got growing in there look at that the peppers i hope they'll survive the winter if they do they'll take off as soon as spring comes and then i've got more peppers there and this we got to clean up because of all the mess and stuff we've been doing back here you know we fixed that room up back there and a lot of stuff had to be moved so that is the rainbow garden Yes, that is shark fin melon all the way down there on the table. Still trying to figure out what to do with it. And the reason I was telling you about strawberries is there are some strawberry plants that you can get a lot of plants, but what you don't get is a lot of fruit. So you want to get a good productive plant for your area, or you'll just end up with a lot of fruit, uh, a lot of plants and not enough fruit. So I'm going to go through my strawberries and the ones that do really good are the ones I'm going to replant. And the other ones, eh, maybe I'll stick them in the ground and let them do their thing. My fig tree back here up on top there has got some figs left on them, but I don't know. They're still turning, they're still turning purple, but we're going to trim that down a little bit. And then this is a purple tree collared. It probably needs transplanting. It's gotten so big, but I'll get cuttings off of it. But all in all, my totes are beautiful. Every single one is perfectly fine. You saw me set that up a couple years ago, maybe three years now, and it is doing fantastic. I've got my dish pans on the other side growing onions and potatoes because I grow potatoes and dish pans. Along here are cuttings of geranium so I can just pick up the pot and move it somewhere else. And then I still have tomatoes growing all through here. So I'm not sure what will happen with that, but I have been harvesting broccoli. My plant came back from in the back here and I've got broccoli, walking onions. I have a lot of milkweed growing and I don't want to just pull it out because if you go to the nursery and buy milkweed for the monarchs that are coming, they sell the pots with a plant about that big for $20. You want a little tiny plant? It's like 12 or $13. So I want to get them all potted because I have a lot of neighbors that want them. I've got pepinos growing all over here. I can't believe it. So looking at it and understanding the plant, this is the original plant. And I get some pepinos here and there, but what, what it is, it's, it's an older plant. I planted this when I first set up the totes in here and my rainbow garden. And then I took a cutting off last year and I put it there and it bursted in the growth. It's growing all kinds of fruit on it. You use that in stir fry and different things. If you let it turn yellow and you eat it that way, it's sweet. If you pick it before, you can use it for stir fry because it, it's, it's not a sweet is what it is, kind of like a melon, but it's not. It's in the tomato family. So I have found that younger plants that you cut and propagate a lot of times do better than the plants that are older. So this three-year-old plant, let's say it's about three years old, it's not that it's fizzled out, but it's so bushy and the trunk is really big and dry. But the new one is green. 
just beautiful and green and it's vigorous to grow and this goes with your purple tree color too so when you're cutting your collards make sure when you're taking the leaves off if you've got a stem you plant that somewhere because the young plants you will find as you garden grow better than the older plants so we love our older plants because the mother plant so we keep them as long as we can but i've got the milkweed through here our yard in the next few months will be covered in monarchs gary's going to take some of the milkweed put it in pots and put it around his garden as well and then i still have tomatoes i've got a hummingbird lunch back there that i've got to find a place for i still have peppers really trying to hang on with the cold weather and then i have more potatoes in oh two gallon buckets walking onions and then i've got my pizza garden that's hanging on but i don't know how the basil is going in this cold weather but it's still alive my oregano is doing good the uh, rosemary is doing good the thyme has kind of died back because it's too cold the sage is doing really good so i'm really pleased with all this everything is going great so that was the trip around the garden because to be honest i am not doing anything i'm getting ready i'm contemplating on what i want to do this year i want to get the dog kennel set up but I'm going to go through each tote. When the time comes, I don't know if you want me to turn on the camera when I just work because I won't be able to answer any questions if I go live, but I could do it and tape it and, or record it and then you can watch it that way. I'm just going to go plant through you know, each one, each one with plants and decide, do I keep this? Do I not keep it? Refurbish the totes by adding in more leaf matter. When I go through, I will pick the leaves. This goes back. This is the way nature grows and this is the way I grow. Of course, if you don't want to do it that way, you can buy all the plant foods you want. You do what you want. But for me, I don't have that kind of money to put out and I put it back and I grow it just the way nature intended. And I love collard for that because it seems to be the biggest thing that the earthworms absolutely gravitate to. So all that goes back into the totes and I constantly create my own soil. Some of you are saying, but gee, I'm just getting started. I don't have it. I don't have any leaf matter. Let me tell you something. Once you start growing, you will have it. You will be producing not only your own food and your own plants, but you will be producing your own compost, which I call soil for your plants. It may not be everything, but it will be a lot. And the other thing I want you to know is be careful on soils. There are some soils that people don't like the M word and that's okay. You don't have to use it. I understand. But there's other ones that have been cheap. You'll see sometimes cheap ones come about. And I've got one right now that I bought that's been sitting now for over a year and nothing will grow in it because there must be herbicides in there. It could have come off a golf course or something. And some of them break down in six months. Some of them could take years. Some of them break down right away. So I don't want you to grow in something that's no good and you may count it as your fault. I went once and bought some from the dollar store and it didn't grow. Some of you said you had great luck and there were others that said, I couldn't grow anything. If I can't grow lettuce in that and nothing will grow, then there's something wrong. And that's the thing. You're not going and buying soil. We're all going to talk about this and saying, oh, well, I bought that. You, mine worked. How come yours didn't work? Because their bag of soil may not have come from the same place your bag of soil came from. It's not something you go into the back room and manufacture and put all everything together and put a little sugar and put a little water and mix it up and feed the hummingbirds. Oh no. Each one's going to have something different. One may have colored leaves. One may have leaves from tomatoes because they have to make a certain amount and then bag them. It may have the same exact label, but you don't know. There's no way, even the producers of the bag soil, there's no way to know every single solitary item getting in there. And sometimes things get in there that don't work out. So keep that in mind and keep that in the back of your head if something doesn't work, it's not your fault and you don't give up. You say, uh-uh, shame on you and go on. Try something else. And this is what's important to remember that a lot of times, your let's use the word failure we're all we all fail and we all make mistakes but we learn from them was not your fault at all that's why you want to remember that if it doesn't work out try something else i have never had a problem with the m 
soil. So I might use that to top dress a little bit. It's cheap, it's a good price, and I think, and I have never called and talked to them, but I think they test their soil to make sure there's nothing bad in it. And that's what's important. A lot of the more expensive organic ones are perfect. If you have the money to buy the bags, because maybe a $15 bag is what you can afford, but somebody else can afford buying the better bags for 40 If that's what you want to buy, buy that, because the better bags are usually going to be good anyways. But you buy what you need. All I want you to do is start the garden. And once you start, you'll be able to grab the leaves you want, and start to build your own soil from your kitchen scraps, your own leaf matter, and you'll go that way, even with shredded paper. You know how I compost. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Isn't this gorgeous for winter? I'm sorry if you're cold. Stay warm, but you'll be there soon. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. You know, I was going to go in, and I think we should go take a walk. Let's go take a walk as an added treat. I can use a walk. You're supposed to walk. It's good for you, right? such a beautiful day. So where would you like to go? I'll tell you what we're, go we're going. We're going to walk down the trail and we're going to go see Gary's garden. Look at the birds. I think I have created so much food for them here with the added totes that I put up and I'm going to put some in here that create the insects that they eat. I'm starting to think they're going to go to nest. I just hope that they're also right that the weather's going to be really good. Isn't that beautiful here? And there's the cannas and different plants that he planted back there and the aloe veras he planted. You know, I have found that when I hit him with water really hard, they flower. And then if I leave them, because I haven't watered, I see one flowering now. If I leave them, then they, they don't produce flowers for a while. So there's something about heavy watering and flowers. So let's, let's walk down here quietly. the back side of the chair garden and the truck bed. And this is where bees, all kinds of pollinators live. And then this is where the rabbit has her babies inside this big bush. This is a garden I didn't get to, but I hope to get to it this. Look at the beautiful flowers. Look at that. I do hope to get to this soon. I'm thinking of doing something in here, not sure yet what. Something that I don't have to come down here and tend to that much. And I've got lots of ideas. Do not kid yourself. I brought you down here, but it was just looking. The backside of my garden. Isn't this beautiful and it's winter? Now keep in mind, we get cold at night. Doesn't mean it's gonna stay this way, but I am gonna take full advantage and we're gonna walk down and see Gary's garden. Let's see what's going on on the inside. And then here, I'll tell you what to do. Oh, look where the water's been running from all the rain we had. You can see it's made its own river. It used to go through here. This was like a stream. And then over the years, it's kind of like dried up. There was a stream up the hill and that's dried up. But this would be the, the rain and the wash off from all the rain would come down here. And that's why there's so much greenery that nobody's planted in here because the ground is so wet. Okay, so there's Gary's garden. Here's a Brazilian pepper tree. So sorry he planted those years ago when we got this property. He thought he was doing a good thing because it's the canyon and he wanted to stop the canyon breeze, which is a good thing, but he didn't realize that their root system is horrible and they take out a bunch of different plants. There's Gary's precious junk pile. I shouldn't call that his picker pile. And then there's his dragon fruit. And that's all passion fruit. He used to have a lot of ubays. I'm wondering if the passion fruit took over the ubays, but they are tropical and they couldn't take the cold the past couple of years. Look at the geranium. Looks prettier on this side than it does in my garden. Honeysuckle in the corner there for the hummingbirds. There's that massive tree. You really get a different perspective. See the trail we had to go down? Oh, isn't that cool? This is why I don't come down here. It's too much of a hike. I should, I should. What I'm gonna do is do a quick walkthrough and then you think of the questions you wanna ask and then you put comments underneath. Gary, because then he'll make a video. He's been very busy working on videos, but you go, Gary, I wanna know about, what is that? 
I don't even know myself what that is. Is that a pepino? Or is that another shark fin melon? What is that? How did you grow that? How are you staking up your dragon fruit, Gary? How long did it take you to build the garden? Look at this. He's been making chayote squash almost every night when I make stir fry. He's got them everywhere. He loves them. Let's see, which way should we go? There's not much that way. Let's walk through the tunnel. We'll take this route. And I haven't been down here, but I heard he's going to make something special down here. You can't ask me what it is because I don't know. Oh, he does have beets. He does have beets. He told me he had some beets growing. And then he's got Swiss chard. It looks like beets. I believe this would be potatoes because he's got a lot of potatoes. Look at this. And what he can't figure out is it's starting to grow back already, the chayote squash. Oh my goodness, this could send you to the hospital if it fell on your head. Look at this. You know, the picture doesn't do justice. It is so big. Oh my gosh. You guys are going to have to help me and tell me what to do with it. Could you imagine you could save people that are hungry and starving if you could figure out what dishes we could make oh my goodness do with it oh my gosh i didn't even see this look he's storing them they store let me tell you something i've got one in the house for a year and the shark fin melon stores it's kind of an odd fruit because it's sweet and not sweet and that's what drives me crazy you want something savory you don't want sweet but yet it's not sweet enough to be sweet I don't know. I'm going to have to figure out something. Is I didn't realize he had that many and he's storing them. And then I gave him this a long time ago. Look at this. It actually grew in the brick. You can see it's the shape of the, the cement block. I gave him this. Oh, I can smell it from here. Mmm. I didn't like it then. And actually, it doesn't smell that bad. It's a curry plant. I bought it as a little plant and it took off and I didn't care for it. So I said, take it. He's got, he does have tons of onions and potatoes and strawberry plants and I don't know. He's got all kinds of things. I don't want to make a garden tour out of this because we already did mine. And I really want to come down with him. So what I want you to do is think of the questions. Because if you drive him crazy with questions, then you're... I shouldn't do this. You're putting him on the spot where he has to come and do a garden tour. I'm not going to walk through because I don't know what's what. Here's the red Malabar spinach and sage. I gave him some sage. And we're not going to walk through right now. But tell him, hey, Gary, when you have a chance, we have to be nice about it. Can you get out here and do a garden tour for us? Look at that. All that is passion fruit. He's got pepinos growing. This is more of the shark fin melon. He's got brassicas. That looks almost dazzling blue like kale, but it's probably a hybrid. Oh, he's got beautiful Swiss chard. I love Swiss chard. I always liked spinach as a kid. And to me, the green Swiss chard tastes like spinach. So that's it. I thought it'd be nice just to walk down and see what else. Okay. I think this is where he's going to do something special. Because see what he's done? He put steaks here. So he's got plans. And then the hummingbirds are up on top. You can't see them right now. But they're up there. There's the deck. And that's where, and the, that's where we go live. That's where the hummingbirds are up there and then we've got our citrus trees that are getting bigger we got to keep that tree as long as we keep it clean they don't consider it a fire hazard because we did clean it off really good and the hummingbirds hang on that it's gorgeous they'll be just full of hummingbirds and those are still doing good the avocado trees there i think that's going to be it for here right now i know you're screaming more more but i definitely want him to do the garden tour this is edible he eats that it's like a lettuce or something Look at that. This is a jungle. I consider this a true jungle. So what he's going to do in here, we can peek through here, is he's going to go ahead and make some of those totes, the ones I've been making for insects, and he's going to bring more of the insect eaters in. They're going to go wild. They're going to come down here, look at this, and they're going to find the tote, and then they're just going to live down here. And the hummingbirds nest in here and everything. There's his banana plants. Look at this. Again, I don't know what a lot of this is because he grows a lot of plants that I don't. There's his crocodile he bought. He loves his crocodiles. I think he's got two of them around here. They look so realistic. 
that's it. He's got bird nests. He's going to put more bird nests up. All right, I thought this would be a cool treat. Ask him questions. Look at this. His nasturtiums, aren't they gorgeous? He grows them all year. They just keep growing and growing. They're not flowering right now, but give them another month or two, and they'll be flowering all through here. And then he's got his sweet potatoes are all under here. That's gorgeous. You know what we need down here? A table and oh, he's trying to get rid of the fig tree. I guess he didn't do this one yet. Table and chairs. You can come down here. Really, you know what? We should rent this out for a camping site. <laughs> I'm joking. Though I would, as a kid, I would have camped here. I camped in my backyard. It wasn't easy camping when I was a kid. Because I did that one night. My mother kept hanging out the back window. There's somebody loose, the police said. So if you hear any noises, let me know. She kept doing that. Oh, there's a killer loose running tonight the street. Just letting you know. This was constant. Like every 15 minutes, eventually, I, I had my friend over. And my girlfriend was over. And she was going to camp out with me. And she couldn't take it. She was screaming every time she heard a noise because of what my mom did. So we had to go in. But I did camp out in my backyard. So this is beautiful. Oh, the chickens hear me. Hey, guys, are you up there? I hear you, but I can't see you. They hear me. Look, you can't see them, but they're right here. I see you. You see me. Go, come on, open up, let us in. He lets them in sometimes. And then he's got his, he's got a tomato project going on here. And look how his tomatoes are beautiful in there. All right, we're going to have to do a garden tour with him. He's got a lot of tomatoes there and stuff. And we're going to have to come back and you can ask him questions. So I just thought this would be a special treat to kind of come to the back and see his beautiful garden. And he thinks it doesn't look nice. Oh, it's not that nice. Are you kidding me? In the winter? I don't think you can get greener than this. He said he's going to redo some of his tree colors, put in fresh new ones, cuttings that is. Can you imagine he got what? A hundred plus dragon fruit? I still see dragon fruit up on the top back there. Okay, so now with that, if I gave you anything that helped you in any way, I would love if you subscribed. It, it supports our channel. And you know what? It gives you kind of more motivation, but no matter what, I love doing this. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Oh, this is beautiful. Bye-bye, everybody. Now I'm done with this garden tour. Now I got to hike back up. They say it's good for you. Walking is good. I will say it's absolutely beautiful. It's not the walking, it's the time. I don't have enough hours in the day. If they could have just added in a few more, 24 isn't enough. I need at least 28. <laughs> it's an olive tree, the birds flying around. It is beautiful, you know, you could camp here. You can make camping sites. The thing is, Gary saw mountain lions. We know the mountain lions here. We know the bobcat lives here. Bobcats don't bother you. Bobcats hide. As soon as they see you, they're gone. If they hear you, they're gone. We've had bobcats normal uh, quite a few times here. So this is a normal place for them to be in because of the cover. But if they know you're coming, they're gone. Now, coyotes will stand their ground sometimes. They're the ones that are a little bit nerve-wracking. But if they think you're big, and there's only one, oh, no more bees. Did a whole video on that, they disappeared. If there's only one, they'll leave, but it's when there's three, and we've got a pack of three that have been roaming around. So if they came down now, my camera is on a big tripod. And let me tell you something, I'd be swinging that tripod at them. Normally I just yell and they leave. See how they can hide out? Perfect hideout for them. Another place where hummingbirds have their nests in here. Oh, this is a real hike. Well, I've got my exercise for today, I think. Okay, I need to do this. I used to do it all the time. Look at this. Beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. Boy, when I was a kid, I would be in seventh heaven. This is all I would need, just animals. Okay, we're back up to my garden. See, coyotes went through last night. They come here, they get water. They haven't touched the garden though. Okay. All right, let's get this video up. And let's get this done. Oh, there's one more pomegranate there. 